language. I'm okay standing. It's just I can't walk as, as well as I used to. Too many walk, too much walking. And I just had a knee surgery, total knee replacement, so I'm, I'm just trying, trying to uh, get used to that uh, knee replacement. So with that, I uh, just want to say thank you for your uh, invitation to this beautiful land of ours, Thunder Bay. I'm originally from Wekwamekong Reserve, Mantulan Island. That's where I was born. But I was kind of raised on residential, uh, residential school in Spanish. I was there when I was six, right up until I was 14, going on 14. So I am a, I'm a product of residential school, I guess you, you might say, but I've really uh, overcome a lot of the, uh, the obstacles that I've, I've been faced with. A lot of good things have come from, uh, from my experience. And also a lot of you can, can imagine what it's like to be, uh, to be a person of uh, very difficult uh, life, life uh, experiences. And those life experiences can build to be a, a very uh, rewarding experience in, after a while. I guess uh, you might say that uh, a person's colorful past precedes them in a way that, uh, that can, be, uh, can be rewarding, very helpful. As you can see, I, I've always uh, kept, uh, kept to my Nishnabe ways and the language that I've, uh, I've spoken about in terms of my language is, is Ojibwe. And I keep my language and I've kept my language because of my stubbornness. They wouldn't let me, I wouldn't let them whip it out of me when I was in residential school. I kept thinking in the language, I kept sleeping in the language, I kept thinking in the language and eating in the language. I just didn't want to, to lose it. So that was my way of, um, of overcoming a lot of the obstacles that I've come across. I've learned to, uh, to be brave in all that I do. And I've learned to be brave when I was four years old. I was taught to be brave. So then I've, I've overcome a lot of fear of darkness, fear of, uh, fear of animals, fear of anything that I have come across. When I, th when I think about how, how we come to be where we are, we have to think about who, who are you, who am I? Who am I? I am, I am who I am and you are who you are. When you think about who I am, I am a, I'm a Ojibwe person. I'm many things to many people, but for me, I am, I am forever Anishinaabekwe. I'm forever uh, Ojibwe, Anishinaabekwe, which is Ojibwe native woman. That's who I am, that's who I will always be. That will never change. And I pass, pass that on to my children, my grandchildren, that they will never forget who they are as Anishinaabe people. And so when, when we think about how, how we are, who we are, we come to be who we are, it's very easy to, to imagine that you are, you are a mother, you're a grandmother, you're, you're an uncle, you're, you're, you're a brother, you're a sister, you're, you know, you're many things, you're a great-grandmother, you're, you're an auntie, you're a sister, you're many things, you're a health worker, you're a, you're a professional, there's many, many things that you are. And so when you think about that, who, who am I, you, you can think about who you are as a housewife or not just a housewife. People say I'm just a, house, a housewife, which is not true. You're many things other than a housewife. <coughs> so uh, in, uh, in the things that we do, in how, in how we, uh, we come to be who we are, I've, I've um, always looked at how, how it is that we come to be what happens, and it's through the spirit that speaks to us. And in all that we do, even though we don't, we don't know it, but it's the spirit that, that follows, follows us in what we do. And when I think about how, how it came to be that it was never my, my intent to walk around the five Great Lakes or St. Lawrence River or the four oceans, it was never my, my intent. When I think about, when I look back on how, how that, that is to be, I remember how, how I, I was born into who I am. I am Oji, I'm Ojibwe, I'm in Shnabekwe. I'm also of the, of the fish clan, which is the Wasisi of fish clan. And I was born February 21st, 1942. And I don't know how old I am. I've quit counting when I was 45. 
And uh, you always have to look at, and did my uh, horoscope, I'm a, a Pisces, which is a fish, twin, I think it's twin fish that the Pisces. So with all of that together, I can see how how I was born into who I am and into to what I was going to be. And everything in my past has always led me to to be to be strong, to be to be built up to to who I, I am at this present time, and I'm uh, I tend to keep keep myself busy in, in 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 helping people understand who they are. When you think about reciprocity, and I I mentioned that yesterday, is reciprocate what's been given to us, and in in the teachings that I've been given, I've I've been told not to not to withhold information to to share what I know, to share with people what, I, what I've experienced. And so when I look at how, how we are as Nishnabe people, the language is very important. That is very important to, to keep our language alive because when you say, I heard you say Wiki, that's not who we are. We're not, I'm not from Wiki, I'm from Wikwemekong. Wikwemekong is a very special word. Wikwe, Wikwe, Wikwe is uh, around the bay and the mic. A mick is a beaver, and a, a, a ong, O-N-G, is where, where they live. So we call Mekong means the bay, the bay of the beavers. That's the real meaning of the, of the uh, we call Mekong. So if you change it to wiki, it doesn't mean anything. It just means, it means it's, it's, a, it's a short term for, for we call Mekong. So I try to keep the languages as close as possible. When... Um, when I was compelled to do what, what, what has led me to be a water walker, it happened in the year 2000. I'm also a sun dancer. I'm also a moon dancer. I'm also a jingle dress dancer. And I'm, uh, I'm many things to people, so I, I try and be, be the best to people who, who want to, to, to help, who, want to, who are seeking help. And understanding who they are, and so when when I was at the Sundance Pipestone Sundance in Minnesota, I, there was a, a lot of people gathering, and uh, was an elder was talking about women's responsibilities and how they have to pick up their bundles and do their work. And um, when he finished talking, he said there was going to be a time when water is going to cost an ounce of water is going to cost as much as an ounce of gold. And then when he finished, he asked, what are you going to do about it? And it seemed like he was looking straight at me when he said that. It was a question that burned in my heart and my mind was, what am I going to do about it? So, you know, when you're asked a, a question, you, you try and answer that. So I, I kept trying to find out what am I going to do about it for a year and a half. And finally, in the year 2002, the winter of 2002, we were sitting around. And the idea came that to walk around the Great Lakes, not the Great Lakes, Lake Superior, because that's where we live. We, we live not far from here, Lake Superior. You can see it from our, from our vantage point. And so we, uh, that was how the idea started, to walk around Lake Superior. And how it all started to walk around the five Great Lakes was when the second day of our water walk, we, uh, we encountered a man he, we were we stopped we were stopped at the highway. Uh, an elder and his son and his grandson came and wanted to do a travel song. They had a big drum, so they did a travel song for us along the highway. We stopped, and as we stopped there, we uh, uh, an elder uh, elderly man pulled out of his his vehicle, came out of his vehicle and stood there and waited until the song was over. Came over and he spoke. And he said, there was a time when I, when I was this knee high, he said, my, great, my grandfather told me that there would come a time when there, there'd be women walking around the five great lakes, he said, and he, he was really moved by what, what he was telling us. And he said, I'm happy now that I'm, I will live to see that, that time happen. And of course, I looked at the young man that was standing beside me, and I said, do we have to do the five great lakes now? because it was really difficult for the first two days. It was just him and I and walking with the pail in the water and the staff. And so that's how it all started. We, we did the, the, the Lake Superior first, first year, 2003. 
and every year thereafter we we walked uh, each of the, each of the lakes every every um Easter Monday we started and we chose Easter because it was a it was a beginning time beginning of the year beginning of spring I guess our our year in our in our native way our year begins in the springtime that's when we we say our new year is is in the springtime so springtime was a time that we we walked and in the in the um, in the event of um, of walking around the, each of the lakes each of the lakes reminds us reminded us of something it told us it told us a story lake superior we knew that it was a very strong lake it was very unpredictable you don't know if it's going to be calm or strong and you don't know what's what's going to happen from one one moment to the next reminded me of a woman so when uh, when i when i think of lake superior i think of a woman because a woman is unpredictable you don't know what she's going to do next so so it's uh, very becoming that we we think of of Lake Superior as a woman. I was standing on Old Woman Bay, Bay, and the water was really calm, just beautiful. I was standing up to my ankles, and I was standing there praying and, and petitioning with my tobacco. All of a sudden, a big wave came, and it just almost engulfed me right up to my my knees. That's how how unpredictable that water can be. You never know it's going to be stormy. You don't know if it's going to be. Uh, what it's going to do from one one moment to the next, and so Lake Superior was a lake that was very very spiritual for us, in terms of how we saw, we saw many things and many things happened to us along the highways too, as we walked. And just to let you know that we started three o'clock three thirty in the morning, every morning, and we finished at the end of the day when when this before the sun went down, mainly because the sun went down. The eagles has to rest, so our eagle, eagle staff, had to be, had to be laid down at the end before the end of the day before the sun came down, and so we walked. And as we walked, we we didn't eat we don't eat breakfast. We we eat berries, we eat uh, oranges or juice, and at lunchtime we stop for a little bit too because we're told that we have to, if you're being being vertical, you have to recline. And that's uh, that, that, that's the time when the animals do rest is at at high noon, so we took high noon as a as a time to to rest our bodies and to lay down and uh, have some some nourishing food and rest our bodies, change our socks because our socks get pretty pretty wet when we're if it's raining. And so when 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 we finished Lake Superior, we 2004 we we did Lake Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan was a beautiful uh, story about how, how, how Anishinaabe, how our ancestors have left signs for us. We saw many things on the on the on the trees. We saw we saw also rocks, rocks, rock paintings, rock, rock formations that told us that our people were there and they left these signs for us to, to let us know that we, we are still who we are. And that reminded us of who we are too now today. What are we going to do? What are we doing? Is leaving a, leaving a message for our people because as our, as we walk with the pail, we're walking the talk, and as we walk the talk, we're leaving a message for our, for our children, our grandchildren, our our ancestors, will our future will see who we are as as Nishnabe. That's what we did for them. They will see that that we left a legacy. We're leaving a legacy for them with the water walk and the walking the talk. So that was the lesson that we learned when we walked Lake Michigan. Lake Huron was a, was a time when we, we really learned how men have to start walking with us. We always had this one, one young man who always walked with us, and then, but we didn't have any other men walk with us. And so I, uh, we talked to the men at Chief's, Chief's Gathering in, in Naughton, and we, we talked to them about the responsibilities of, of who we are as Nishnabekwe how we have to take care of our bundles, take care of our lives and our, uh, watch over our children. We are life givers, carriers of waters, waters in life. And in that, that context of a uh, of man, of man the, the, sun, the, sun, the sun comes up every day and in carries, the, carries the fire for over Mother Earth. And in that token, we, we are reminded too that men have to, have to take their responsibility for for what they do to plant their seeds, to plant their 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 light on on the on the 
on the homes. They have to take that responsibility for, for who they are as Nishnabe people. So I, I talked to them about that and and the relationship they have with the son and the and Mother Earth that women have the responsibility relationship for for the for Mother Earth. And so the next day we had men, we had two young men waiting, waiting on the rocks in, in Sudbury, past Sudbury, waiting for us to, to come by. We were late that morning, we started at four o'clock. He said, we thought you guys started at three o'clock. We've been here since, since three o'clock waiting for you. So these two young men walked with us and started walking with us. And along the way we had men, men come by too, and stop, uh, stop by. We had one man come, walked with us right up until all day, he was in cowboy boots. And can you imagine how, how much blisters he had towards the end of the day? And he went home, his wife picked him up, and the next day he, was, he came and walked with us again with, uh, with new runners, took off his, but he was limping really bad. So the men started, and all around Lake Huron, we had men walking with us. And I don't know how many walk, walkers here, do you have any water walkers here? No? We have usually when I when I talk to people, we have quite a few stand put put up their hands and and their water walkers. I really don't think any of you know that you are water walkers. You are water walkers in your own way. You you are carrying carrying life life within your bodies. You with the water that, that we're all united with water. So you're all walking for the water in all that you do. So water walkers are are, are everywhere even though you may not, not have walked with a pail of water, but you are walking with life. You're giving life to, to, your, to your people. And so uh, Lake Huron, and then we, we went to Lake, Lake Erie after that, the, next, the, following, the following year. Lake Erie was a, was a place where we really experienced a lot of negativity along the, especially the, the, on the US side of, of Lake, Lake Erie. We were called uh, lazy, crazy Indians, lazy Indians. We were, we heard, uh, you know, this uh, whoa, whoa, whoa signs where, where we, when we walked through town. We also had men walking behind our, 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 our young women who were carrying the pail and asked, they were asked if they, they want to get married and, and they were asking many, many questions. So we just kept trying to, to remain stoic in all that we do. We didn't want to uh, to create any. We're not creating any any animosity. And um, a couple of times when I was walking with with this young man from uh, from Gouli Bay, he uh, a truck went by and, and two tr twice twice a truck went by. It's different kind, different truck. And they would yell, "Get a job!" And he and I know this young man makes a lot of money. He makes about eighty thousand a year. But he walked with us for for about a week or so, uh, just to just to uh, to give us support. And um, it was really. And then when we stopped at the restaurant, we we had people come and ask what we're doing, and of course they tell we're crazy, you're crazy to be doing what you're doing. Of course we have to agree we were we were crazy. I don't know who anybody in their right mind would walk around with a pail of water, so we did agree with them just to you know just to make them happy. So we. Uh, we, we are water walkers and we are proud of who we are as Nishnabe people. And it's not only Nishnabe people that are supposed to be caring for the water. Like I say, you're all water walkers. You all have to take care of the water in wherever you are in your communities. And so when we finished that, we, we did Lake Ontario the, the next year. And um, Lake, lake Ontario is, is a lake that is very, very polluted. And if anybody has ever experienced that, you can see you can see the shimmering, especially when the sun is hot. You can see the shimmering of the poison in the water. When we when we after we we went to uh, um, Toronto, Toronto, we knew we knew the water was very very bad. And after we crossed <clears throat> into into New York, we also experienced another. Another area where, where one of the girls noticed that the water that we carried was really heavy. Her shoulder was really sore. And we started feeling the same way too. We, we noticed the 
pail is always the same, same amount of water that we carried in the, in the pail. And so when we, we went around the other, the other side, we also noticed um, nuclear, nuclear uh, buildings that, that uh, uranium was being, being built or, or for, for whatever reason. And so we, we didn't even go in the, in the water. We usually, every, every time we, we visited the lake, we put our feet in the water. We stayed by the, by the shoreline, but we didn't go to the water. And um, because we knew that was, there was something wrong with the water. And a year later, after we finished the water walk, during the winter, we got an article from, from a lady in, in, on, in Toronto. There was a magazine, I think she got it from an article. And in a one-page article about Lake, Lake Ontario, where scientists did, did research on the water, it was labeled heavy water. So we knew that it was heavy water, that we, because of the chemicals in it, that they measured it and it was, it was labeled heavy water. So we knew that it was heavy water because we experienced that. In all that we do as Anishinaabe people, we, are, we, we, knew, we know these things. We know a lot of things, but it's just it takes a scientist to prove what we know. It's same with uh, Dr. Moto. You've heard of Dr. Moto. He uh, he did research on on water crystals, and those are things that we knew we knew from from you know from day one, as a, as a young child about water, how 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 important water is, how how it can hear you, it can speak to you, it can can listen to what you're saying. And the water that I've left here yesterday was still here, and I can see it moving. It's it, without even, it's moving now without even touching it. It is moving. So water can hear. Water can can listen to what you're saying. And if you uh, if you're angry, it can also create create uh, different different elements in the water. And so when we finished our all our lakes, we uh, I was at a meeting in. Uh, in the Haudenosaunee, and uh, there was this man. Uh, I always, I can't always. I'm always forgetting his name. Anyway, he said, uh, he said, "You've finished the five great lakes." He said, "You're not done yet. There's still lakes appear. There's still like the St. Lawrence River. All the lakes flow flow to the St. Lawrence River down to the ocean." He said, and "You're not done yet." And uh, his name is Henry Lickers. Just remembered now. I went home and I told my sister what, what he said, and she says, why doesn't Henry Lickers walk the St. Lawrence River? <laughs> so, mm, so anyway, that was a joke, her joke. So we, we, did Lake, we did the St. Lawrence River the following year. And when we finished, we, uh, we finished at this place called Riviere de Madeleine. And every, every once in a while, we taste the water as we, as we got closer to the ocean. And that was the place where we really tasted the water, that place. And we, uh, that's where we stopped. It took us uh, a good four weeks, a little over four weeks to do that. Lake, the lake is really beautiful. Reminded me of uh, Lake Superior. That's why I always, uh, I always think of Lake Superior when I think of Lake St. Lawrence River. And sometimes I call it Lake Superior too, because it's so beautiful, so, so uh, unpredictable, and so beautiful, beautiful river as you get down to the ocean. But when it, when it narrows, then it's not as beautiful, but as it, as it goes that way, then it's just beautiful in its, in its, in its uh, how it can be, be united with the, with the salt water. And so when we, <clears throat> when we think about how, how we as women have to carry our bundles, you don't know you're carrying a bundle, it's here and here, that's where your, our, our sacred bundle is. Is who, is who we are as Nishnabe people, even as, as not as Nishnabe people, but even white people, even black people, yellow people, they all carry the same the same bundle, this bundle of knowledge, this bundle of water, as women women carriers of, of life. We are carriers of life and as women we are united with the with the with the waters of the of the earth. And we have to take care of her when I say reciprocity, we, we think about reciprocating our our work for the water, for the Mother Earth. We have to think about how, what can we do? What can you do for the water? You have to ask yourself, what can I do for the water? 
And as women, we have to also remember that we carry life within us when we're, when we're pregnant. We carry that life within us. And there's a song, that, that an Indian song that we sing when we, when we see a woman pregnant. There's a, she comes, we see her coming. And she's carrying life within her. That's how, that's how that song goes. It's a beautiful song. It's a woman for pregnant, pregnant woman song. And so we, we, we have many songs, we've, even, even when we walked, we've developed many, many of our own songs. The, the way the water looks, the way the water sings, that's how we, the song's built too. So we build our own songs in the language. And so when, we, when we're in tune with, with ourselves as Anishinaabe people, as, as, as women, we remember that we are part of the earth. We are all, we're all united with the water and the water with the, with the earth. The, the air, the air we breathe. The air is also water. And so we have to take care of the environment as much as we can, not only the water, but the air and the land. And in that land, we also have responsibility to reciprocate our, our work with our animals, our, our dodems, which are our clans. Mine, mine is a fish clan. And there's other, other clans that, are, that we have to take care of them too because they one day, one day, one day, help us when we're, when we're really down and out. They took care of us with their bodies. We, they feed us, the deer, the moose, the beaver, the fish, well, they, all, they all take care of us. And then when that's all gone, we won't have anything to eat. So we have to reciprocate what, we, what is given to us. And in our relationship with our mother, the earth, we also have a grandmother that we, that who, who takes care of the water for us. And you know that the full moon is also very special for us. The moon, when it's full, it's a, she's in her fullness, and she's in her moon time. When a woman is in her moon time, she's also she knows that she's also full when she's in her moon time, and so we re reciprocate that in our understanding of, of how how we as women have to take care of our bodies, take care of ourselves, just the way the full moon takes care of Mother Earth on the on the earth. She she's the tide keeper. She she's the one who who can change the waters on Mother Earth. She's the one who, even in the winter time, she takes care of the waters of the ice, the ice water. She's also called Anjigamikwe. There's many, many names also that she's, she's also taken care of in her own way, in our language. And so we are united in, in, to the universe in that way, that our, our, the stars also are, we, we call them our, our brothers and sisters. And even though we, even though you may not understand it, but that's how we, we are. As we think, we think in that way, in our minds, that we are all, we are all united. We're all related in one way or another, through the through the earth, through the universe. Just the way our mother, grandmother, first sitting grandmother, we call her Netamabikwe. She's the one who sat with the Creator at one time when, when all things were made. And all things were made that they knew, they knew everything that was going to happen to, to the earth. So they, they provided all these things for us that we are using now. And there'll come a time when we're going to be really, uh, have to really look at how, how we as, as, as people, as humans, have to take care of, of the earth because she's taken care of us all these billions and billions of years. Now it's our turn to take care of her because if we don't, she's going to be, be gone. And when she's gone, we're going to be gone also. So we have to reciprocate that, that knowledge that we have, how to take care of our Mother Earth, because she's our mother and we really have to take care of her just the way our mothers, we have to take care of our mothers, we have to take care of her also. And our grandmother too, who, who is up there in the sky world, she also speaks to us in her own ways in her own differences, in her different colors that she wears. We also have to acknowledge, acknowledge her. And the sun, which is that, that represents our men, our men, we also have to acknowledge, acknowledge our men in our oil that we do. There was a time when the men were excluded in our ceremonies, but we now, we now have to include them because they are part of, part of who we are. A lot of the teachings that they, we have to pass on to them also because they also are single parents, single fathers, who, who also have children, girls and boys that they carry them. They have to, uh, to raise on their own many times, so we have to include them in the teachings, a 
about how we how we have to start taking care of our our children, our grandchildren, and the next generations to come. And so that is how we how we look at at life. There was also a. How much time do I have? Okay. Uh, just signal me if I'm talking too much. I I tend to get carried away when I when I talk about about the importance of women. Women are very. Uh, if we don't have women, we wouldn't have life. And so we're life carriers. We carry life within our bodies. And when we're pregnant, we carry life. And when the water breaks, we know life is going to come. Just the same with Mother Earth. When, when the water breaks, when her, when her uh, water starts to flow, we know life is going to come pretty soon. We can see little skunks, little porcupines running around. We know that she's already given life. And same with women, when the water flows, she gives life. We know that she's going to give life. And during that time, when you're, when you're nine months in the womb, you are each and every one of us, male and female. We are, we are of the womb. We are of the water. We're born of the water. So we're all, we're all united with the water. We're all related in a way that we are, we are not, not separate, separate from each other. We, all, we are all part of the water. And so for nine months when you're in the womb, you're, you're also learning many things during that time. And when I taught yesterday, I talked about the, the nine, uh, nine months, uh, the, the gifts that you're given, the invisible gifts that you cleanse yourself when you're doing the cleansing ceremony. You cleanse all those invisible gifts that you have, the gifts that you see. I see all the gifts that you have, you see, but the invisible, invisible gifts are the, the sight, the hearing, the, the tasting the feelings, the touch, the hearing, all the, all the invisible gifts that you have. Those are the things that, that you were born with, you're born into this world with. For nine months, you were, you were learning how to use those invisible gifts, how to, how to listen, how to feel, how to touch, how to taste, how to even see some, 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 some of our people have seen, seen some things when before, before they were born, they saw through the, through the womb. So the, the, the womb is a very, very special special place. It's a very thin film. You can see through it. If you can see through, through a sheet, you can see through, through the, the, the womb of, of a woman. And so babies sometimes do, rec do, do acknowledge what they saw before they were born. And so when we, we talk about how we, at nine months, we, we've learned all these things. And so when we see a woman who is pregnant, we remember, we are reminded of, of all the nine months that she's going to carry this child. And so we help her with, with, the, with the knowledge that she's going to be, she's gonna have to watch what she eats, even how she thinks, what she, what she uh, looks at. And all these things that we, we teach our young, young women who are pregnant to, to, to remember those things. And so when, after nine months being in the womb, you come out screaming, yelling, as as a newborn, and with that sound is that sound is your your language. That's the first sound that you make. Is that sound? Some some Italian sound different when they come out of the womb. White 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 baby sound different. So we, and Indian baby sound different too. So so if you ever listen to the to hospital maternity ward, you, you hear the sound of different languages through the babies. And so our language is the first first gift that's that's that we were brought into this world with is the language of who we who are sounding. And way way when is we call it in our language is that sound that we make. And the other gift is our nose win, which is that gift of, of name. We're born with born into this world with a name. And many of the people call it a spirit name. That's the name that we carry through life. That's a carry that's the name that we speak to our spirit when, when our when we ask for for petition for whatever, like my name, I said yesterday is Pidasuke. Pidasuke means uh, who comes with the light, and I have to honor that name every time I, I say I say my name, or I say who 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 Pidasuke is. She's the one who carries the life within 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 herself. It carries that light also. So there's many things that that who who uh, who Pidasuke is. And so the other gift that's, that we're brought into this world is a day win, which is the heartbeat. 
the heartbeat of Mother Earth that we carry that life within us. And when we, we, we hear the sound of, of the, the, the drum, we know that's the sound of our Mother the Earth. And we also hear that sound of the, the heartbeat of our, our Mother. And so the, the drum is very, very uh, instrumental for us when we, when we look at how, how we, as, uh, as we're born into this world, we hear the heartbeat of Mother Earth. We also hear the heartbeat of our Mother. And so when we hear the heartbeat of, of Mother Earth, when we sit on her and during the time of fasting, we sit on her lap and we hear her, feel her energy, we feel her heartbeat. And so we're united in that way. And the other gift is the gift of spirit, which is that Dokunabe, which is that spirit that within us, that, that, that travels with us in our dreams. When we're, even when we're, we're driving, we, 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 we're driving or walking in our daily life, we hear. We can hear different messages from different people. That's the spirit walking, walking and talking to you. And I and I sure I, I explained about how, how the words came, when 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 the uh, when I was at the Sundance, how this elder spoke, and and so the elder spoke to me. It wasn't really to me that he was speaking. He was speaking to everybody in the universe, in the, in the crowd that was there. But in, in, in words of, of we, if we listen to words very carefully, you can, you can hear, hear a message that is for you only. And so when I, hear, when I heard that message, if, 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 uh, if we continue with our negligence, that's what will happen. And what are you going to do about it? It seemed like he was talking straight, straight at me, but it was the spirit of, the, of his words that came, that hit me here and hit me in my head and my, my heart. And so that's how we, we as, when we travel, when we talk to people, we, we are messengers. We call them conduits. We are conduits of the spirit. And so we have to, uh, to acknowledge what we hear, how we hear things, and how we, how we experience the spirit within us. In our dreams, when, we, when we're dreaming, we, we hear, we come, we, when we wake up, we, we remember a dream. That was our spirit, our spirit traveled to some place we didn't know, we don't know where. But when we, when we wake up, we remember a dream. Sometimes you don't remember a dream, but it'll happen and it'll be, you call it, uh, what's the name of that now? Um, deja vu, you call it deja vu. So it's something that your spirit didn't want you to remember right away, but you remember it later on and it happens. And then you have a deja vu. And so when we, we, we listen to our bodies and our spirit, when, when, you, hear, when you hear something or when, you, when you're excited you, or your spirit can wake you up in different ways, you, you feel hair, your hair standing on end. So you, hear, you hear people say, oh, my hair was standing on end. And I was so afraid or I was so excited. Sometimes the hair on my arms too goes, goes up and, and I get goose pimples. So I know when something is good, when something is bad, I can, I can feel it in the pit of my stomach. That's how I know. So knowing yourself, knowing, knowing your, your, your signals from the spirit, that's very, very important for you to understand that, how the spirit is speaking to you, trying to tell you something. And sometimes I, I get, in the, in the, in the, I feel, I feel it's almost like somebody's watching me. And so I know my spirit is trying to tell me something, so I, I listen and I and I'm very careful how how I do things, how I say things. And so reciprocity is very important that we have to we have to remember that we have to take care of our mother the earth, the environment, the air, the water, the the elements, everything that is on, on her that that was given to us as Nishnabe people, not only as Nishnabe people, but the four four races of man were brought down on this earth to to take to do what they need to be doing, and each of us has our own stories. Each our own has our own creation stories. Every creation story is true. You may hear it a different way, a, a little slightly different, but it's all the same. The Bible has theirs. The uh, the yellow, the black, they all have their creation stories. We have our creation stories, and so we're all all united in, in a way that the way that the Creator taught us how to take care of our mother, the earth. And so that is what I want to share with you this morning. And I also wanted to share a legend about the sleeping giant. Um, 
you see, I don't know if any of you saw Sleeping Giant. There's a story that the, the mine, there's a mine under the, under the Sleeping Giant, a silver mine. And in our legends, that uh, that tells us that there was a time when, when when the when they mined when the Ojibwe, Ojibwe take care took care of that mine of silver, and the and the people were seeing that these beautiful amulets that they wore, and they they used the silver to exchange for, for whatever that they, they they bartered for. And so the the Sioux, the Sioux people, wanted to know where where that where they where that where they came from where that that precious silver came, that silver colored colored um, stone came. And so it was um, one, one Sioux pretended he was Ojibwe and, and, and broke into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the territory of the Ojibwe's and, and he, he followed the Indians to the, to the sleeping giant. And as, and as he, uh, he took a great big great big stone, white stone, and that was the silver that, that he picked from the, from the mine. And he took it to, to his, uh, his community. And, as, and as, as he did so, he took the white man too saw, saw, the, saw the precious metal and he too wanted, wanted, wanted to know where, that, where that, that precious metal came from. And so, uh, and so they, and so he, he used, he used alcohol on this Sioux man to, to tell him where, where it was so they so they were uh, they went to this mine and a big storm came and this is to make a long story short a big storm came and they they were buried in on the in the mine and with that too the the, the Nanabashu story is the Nanabashu had said one time told the Chibwe people to take care of the the uh, take care of the stone that is under the, under under the mine if if they if they don't something is going to happen so all the all the all the ones that were that were in the mine died and when this uh this man and when the bushu laid on top of the on top of the mountain to protect what is what is under under there and even now when 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 people try and try and go to the mountain to the to the mine, nobody knows where the mine is. There's a shaft there. Um, I haven't gone to the shaft yet, but I I want to go there one day and go and see, go and see where that is, where the where the the water and the air, the air comes from from this big shaft from the water, underneath underneath where he lies, and um, I don't know. Some people say that's where his his bum is, his anal. And it comes up to the top, so I don't know how true that is. That's why I'd like to see the where that is. <laughs> go up to the mountain and go and see where that is. So you see him laying laying on top of the on top of the mountain. There's a road that goes there, Sibley. It's called Sibley Sibley Park. That's if you ever want to go to Pearl. It's not an island. It's just a, a peninsula, a big peninsula. So that's uh, I just wanted to share that with all of you. Say miigwech for your listening. Help me Yeah. Do you want to sit down? Yeah, that's it. I'm going to see. Is there any questions or comments or maybe some encouraging words anybody would like to share with Josephine? There's two mics. In Even the if you say IBS, that's okay too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Love you too. Yeah. There's many, many lakes that are being walked. Skugog. Skugog is going is just finished. And then there's Lake Simcoe that's going to happen on the 23rd of June. So there's water walks all over the world. I know there's some in, in Denmark that have been, we've heard. So there's water walks all over the world. And I encourage you to, 
to start doing your, your lakes, to give homage to, to the lake that, that is in your community. Even if it's walking around a puddle, you know, it's water too, so it needs, needs your prayers, needs your, your petition for help. Thank you.